Hi everybody, welcome back to Fun with Olivia. If you are new here, this channel, yes, used to be Makeup Fun with Olivia. I also love makeup a lot, but lately I've been talking more about yarn, and so I changed my name to my YouTube name to fun with Olivia because I want to have all kinds of fun with you all. So makeup is not off the table, but we're just talking a little bit more about yarn lately. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. So today I wanna to talk about three FOs, finished objects, and one whip, work in progress. Let's start with my finished objects. The very first one, is my lost in time shawl i finished it if you guys remember this shawl has lots of texture um, and i fell in love with the yarn when i went to lions um I'm to lions <laughs> when i went to michael's and i just I've had this on my Ravelry queue for ages, years, I'm not even kidding. Um, and it's just, yeah, it, it did not let down. It was so interesting because you would make these two rows and then on the third row you would go down back two rows, you know, um, and that just, I feel like it makes it so interesting, especially when you're using this self-striping yarn. What was the yarn I used? I wrote it down, Karen Skinny Cakes and Plum Pudding. Um, I just, I loved it. I could have done without this lilac color here. And in fact, I did on purpose take it out here, but I hadn't taken it out here. So this, let me see. So this is kind of where I was starting. And then when I got to this, I'm like, oh, let me try it. And then when I started getting further, I didn't want to frog everything. So I just left it there. But I really would rather have not have had this there. And here's why. Because you do these stitches behind you, uh, their back post double crochets and so you can see the lilac under there now i'm just being nitpicky i don't think it looks horrible i just i'm being nitpicky and so when i came to the lilac again in kind of this area i did cut it out and then when i was finishing it i kind of felt like oh my gosh that light lilac is standing out even more because it's just by itself so i decided to leave it on here and I'm okay with it being the baubles. I, you know, I again, I think I would have preferred not to have that lilac, but I'm still very, very happy with this shawl. It's big enough. <laughs> Sorry, I'm wearing another, another shawl that I made a couple of years ago. This is the Boom Shawl. Um, anyways, let's see. So remember, I was kind of worried that I didn't have enough to fold it well I have plenty now I can wear it this way I can wear it this way um, oh I put it backwards <laughs> so what I was trying to say is I can wear it this way or you know if I give it away and I might I don't know we'll see um, yeah there we go it's nice and big. It's nice and big, so I can even put it like this. I don't know. I And, you know, this is the type of shawl that you can really make two of them and kind of make it into a poncho, I feel like, because it's so pretty. And, you know, if you don't mind having texture. But anyway, so that's done. Yay! Um, the next one, and I am kind of cold, so I'm putting this back on. This keep, keeps my... I have to have my neck warm, which is why I love making scarves. Um, and this one's just squishy. I both knit and crochet, and this one's knit, of course. It's just knit stitch. Um, okay, so the next finished object is the Wild Bird Shawl by Tony Lipsy. If you're familiar with um, TL Yarn Crafts, that's who Tony is. And this is what it looks like. 
this is blocked because it did come out a little bit wonky. If I can, I will try to put pictures here of before and after here or here somewhere um, because it does come out wonky at first. This yarn was a little bit, um, I don't know, it just less drapey. That's what it is. So it kind of puffed up a little bit this way. Um, and this was definitely more drapey, so I didn't have much problem with this, but blocking it did help kind of stretch out the stitches. Um, so yeah, and unfortunately I wasn't able to do the whole pattern because I started running out of yarn. This is hand dyed yarn that I uh, got. Let me tell you what they are. So this dark purple one, it almost looks black, doesn't it? But it's actually dark purple. Um, it's almost like a blueberry. You know, when the blueberries are kind of purple blue, it's just, it's so pretty. Um, so it's by Knitted Wit, and it's a DK Superwash Merino in the color Hyacinth. I'll try to put it down here like I always do. And um, then this color is also a hand-dyed yarn um, by Mace of Skeins. It's her High Roller DK. It's in the color Kiss and Tell, and it was from her Valentine's Day collection. So I decided to combine them, and at first I was a little bit worried, I have to say, because I thought, God, is this too much contrast? But if you see here, the I mean, this is really, really dark purple, and I thought it'll go. So um, I'm actually quite happy with it now, but I was a little bit scared at the beginning. Um, I did cut out a portion of like some, some of these rows because I saw that I, I wasn't going to make it. Um, some rows here as well and here. And then at the very end, I was very bummed because I love bobbles. Um, and there are bobbles in the edging. I'm moving around too much. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to figure out how to best show this to you. If you can see here, the bobbles. Um, and the bobbles are supposed to be closer and more of them. And so I only made about half of them. And I only made one row of bobbles because I was running out of yarn. So, um, you know, I'm kind of a little bit bummed about that, but I I think it still looks pretty. What do you think? I, I still like it. Um, I love the Pico edging. I'm not a big fan of crocheting Pico edging, but I love how it looks. So it was totally worth it to, to do the Pico edging here. Um, and it's a very drapey shawl. Again, I don't know if I'm going to keep this or give it away, but I did enjoy making it. And I do hope to make another one and do the whole pattern because this must be lovely in, in a huge, you know, like just, to, to do all of the rows without running out of yarn. And then a nice feature of this shawl is here in the middle, she has a front post double crochet running all the way down. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can put it sideways. And so that's kind of like a nice little decorative feature of the shawl as well. It's really, really pretty. Um, and again, I'd probably use this as a scarf for me, for myself. Um, I don't use shawls as shawls. Um, I just use them as, you know, um, scarves, but this is really pretty. So you could use it as a scarf, um, depending on where it ends up. Okay. My third finished object is from my February Yarn Yay subscription box. And it is the fingerless, what are they called? So Comfy Fingerless Mitts by Vicki Howell. I used the Knit Collage Serenity yarn. It's a boucle yarn that came in it. And so initially I wasn't thinking of doing the fingerless knits because I thought I'm not going to use fingerless knits. And I thought I might try to make some booties or something. But I got so excited. So one of the features um, or benefits of being part of being a Yarn Yay subscriber is that you get access to her uh, private Facebook group. And everybody was showing their pictures of their mitts. And I'm like, oh, no, I want to make them. So I did make them. And I'm really glad I did. Because my daughter ended up keeping them. And so this is kind of what they look and when you put them on and she had two sizes in the pattern this is the little booklet that came in with the yarn yay subscription this was the knit pattern but it also had this um, crochet pattern and so this is how you wear them 
And so, you know, if you're in like an area that has snow or it's really cold, these can come in quite handy. The, the reason my daughter um, loves them, however, is because she draws and so she holds her her um, pencils in a way that kind of she digs into her hand and she said that not only do these keep her hands very warm because it gets chilly but also it prevents her from digging into her her hands so um, these have already been washed I did wash them once and they stayed quite squishy which is cool now it was a little bit harder to crochet with this boucle yarn but I'm really happy with them I I just love that the, my yarn yay boxes always teach me something new or give me an experience of yarn that I wouldn't have normally bought my first yarn yay box was in January and I did a brioche um, cowl and I had never tried knitting brioche um, and because I knit or crochet then I have two patterns to choose from this month I chose the crochet, but last month I did the brioche knitting, and I just, I really like that. I'm really enjoying my Yarnier subscription box. Okay, so the last item is my whip, my work in progress, and this is for my daughter. It's per her request. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like first. <laughs> This is the tummy. Can you guess what this is? Probably not, unless you're a Pokemon lover. <laughs> Maybe this will help. Let me show you. It's going to go like this on the body. Let me put the head down. <laughs> anyway, the, the <laughs> I put everything down. And this is the tail. Does this give you any clues? Do I have any Pokemon lovers out there? Okay, so let me show you what this is going to be. It's going to be a Mew Amigurumi. And this is the pattern. I bought it on Etsy. And it is by One Up Crochet. And, I'm, I, you know, I was not knowing what to expect with this pattern. But I have to say it went really quickly. And I'm really enjoying it and it just it feels so nice and squishy I can't wait to finish this so this is like the face obviously and um, the body I showed you the tail but I also have the feet and the little paws um, I am really impressed at this pattern. I have to say the shaping, the shaping, like where she has the decreases and the increases and it just, it makes for the perfect shape on this uh, Mew. I'm just, I'm really, really impressed. And this tail was not my favorite because <laughs> you have to like, be crocheting in the round and it's so thin and then to put some fiber fill in there um, I love the end of it I think it's so pretty but yeah this I told my daughter this was not fun <laughs> but I love you <laughs> anyways um, and then I have the little ears too so everything is kind of done these are the hips that are gonna go together I think with uh, I think I don't know, I have to look at the instructions. So everything is done. Everything is crocheted. I just need to sew it up together and put some eyes on it and then uh, make the little Pokeball um, if my daughter wants it. She probably will want the Pokeball. Um, I think it makes it look so cute that the Mew is holding it. So that's my work in progress. Um, I have not made an Amigurumi in a long time. In fact, I think the last time I did it, let me see, I have my Ravelry up here. And the reason they, that this came up actually is because I made a little robot amigurumi for my son and then I was going to make a little robot girl for my daughter and she's always kind of reminded me, you still haven't made my robot, you still haven't made my robot and I wasn't even crocheting or anything. Um, and then this year I decided, because we have a little bit more time, we're at, I'm working from home and I said, you know what, I'm going to make 
your robot for you this year? Or do you want me to make you something else? And so she chose the the Mew instead, which this it's been fun. It's been fun. So um, anyway, that is what I'm working on. And I know that that's going to come to a quick end soon because it doesn't take that much to put those together. Um, and I'm already like itching for my next project. So um let me know um, what you're working on. I would love to hear about it in the comments. And thank you so much for visiting with me today. Bye.